Hey friends, this is Michael Bohm with Youth Apologetics Training. Today we're going to start a new series about signs of a cult. We're going to be looking at the different traits that most cults have in common. Now, if you, as we go through, we're going to look at a bunch of different traits that are found in cult groups. If you find that your church exhibits some of these traits, uh, perhaps it's not time to panic, but it is time to pray and look at your church thoughtfully and through biblical glasses and see if it really measures up. In this series, what I want to do is expose these different traits that cults have in common. There are many well-intentioned, good churches out there that have some of these traits. And in the process of this series, we're going to look at the common definitions of cult. It is an elusive word. There are many different definitions of the word cult, okay? So what exactly is a cult? There's so many different definitions. Matt Slick from Karm.org, this is what he says. He says, cults are most often religious groups that use teaching and social structures to exhibit strong and or controlling influence over its members' financial, material, and social circles. The beliefs are typically driven by a single cult leader and a specific set of religious beliefs unique to that group. A cult is generally a, a group that has split off of an orthodox type group that has a set line of teaching. So most of the groups we're going to talk about today are uh, Christian cults, okay? So they split off of orthodox Christianity, and then they start denying the essential doctrines of the Christian faith and even the secondary essential doctrines of the Christian faith. But anyway, these cult groups will deny the essentials. They might accept one or two of them, but they, for the most part, they will attack the central, essential doctrines of the Christian faith. And then they'll go after the secondary essentials, the things that are really important. And if you're saved, you probably should be believing them. There's usually, there's usually a single leader that everybody gathers around and then they split off of Orthodox Christianity create what is usually referred to as a sect. A sect is kind of like a little splinter group of Christianity that splits off. They don't have huge influence, okay? Uh, generally not necessarily a one single leader, although sometimes there is. And they're generally not as far out as you're going to find a, a, a cult. These cults will gather around a single human leader. They'll start coming up with their own doctrines, their own special revelations, and they'll start taking their group down a whole new trail, a trail that has not been accepted by any Christians for thousands of years. But yet this group has special new revelation, uh, and sometimes they'll claim that the original apostles believed this, but somehow corruption came in the line somewhere in there. Maybe there was a big falling away or something like that. And now everything's corrupted. Christianity is of the devil and salvation is through this little cult group. And so you're going to find in many cult groups that the cult will, in a sense, become the mediator between you and God. Okay, so you, you really can't get to God but by through this cult, through this movement. Cult, then, is a group of people polarized around someone's interpretation of the Bible and is characterized by major deviations from Orthodox Christianity relative to the cardinal doctrines of the Christian faith, particularly the fact that God became man in Jesus Christ. There, I mean, these groups are all led by false teachers and false prophets. And false prophets and false teachers are warned about throughout the Bible. It's everywhere. Here we go. Here's, here's one sign of or trait of being in a cult. Every cult has a single powerful human leader. Okay. This group leader is always right. Moving on, the group leaders are often uh, the exclusive means of knowing truth or receiving validation. Uh, no other processes of discovery is really acceptable or credible. Questioning doctrines, 
especially doctrines that come from the leaders, is discouraged. And often there is no tolerance for questions or critical inquiry. And the cult leader's word or teachings of the cult are to become absolute truth overshadowing the word of God. The convenient answer is the Bible's corrupt. If they match, then they'll use the Bible as a proof text. If they don't match, the Bible's corrupt. They claim to have found secrets that are not revealed in Scripture. These groups often uh, are, are guilty of adding to the Bible with other publications or revelations. Each cult uses pressure tactics to coerce its members into submission. Some cult leaders will teach a Jesus that is not found in the scriptures. Ask them if they are saved. Ask them if they are confident they're going to spend eternity with God in heaven. Of course, cults often urge their converts to leave their families. You're, you're just an urge to pull away from worldly influences altogether. Uh, when leaving a cult, there's no legitimate reason to leave. Former followers are always wrong in leaving, negative, or even jailed, or even evil. And cults often have a doctrinal statement that is not clear, or have radical changes in their doctrine. And you'll find these types of things in many cult-type movements. The, the repetitive phrases, meditation, chanting, uh, speaking in tongues. Uh, another trait of cults is that the cult leader and its leadership will dictate, uh, many times, will dictate all the major and some of the even minor decisions in your life. Uh, the leader is not accountable to any authorities. I talk, uh, many, many cult groups will encourage you to take part in things that uh, are generally considered unethical or flat out sinful, but they'll justify it. Because it, it is the ends justifying the means type mentality. And oftentimes they'll even couch that in, in Christian language.